Kristen. I'm one of the animal care specialists here at Audubon Zoo, and I'm here to talk to you about Action Indonesia Day. So, Kristen, what exactly is Action Indonesia Day? Action Indonesia Day is a day to raise awareness for the Action Indonesia GSMP, which is a global species management plan. Um, it's basically a group of zoos and other organizations that are working together to help conserve a bunch of the species in Indonesia. And so can you talk a little bit about what animals are involved in Action Indonesia Day? Sure. So um, my favorites, of course, is the uh, Babarusa, like the ones we have here at Audubon. They're part of this global species management plan, along with Anoa and Bantang. And we've also been, they've also been working with the Sumatra and Tiger Global Species Management Plan. So they're kind of working together since they're all from the same place. And so what are some of the threats that these animals in India face? Um, well, the, uh, in Indonesia, the threats they're facing are primarily poaching and um, habitat loss from logging and things like that. Um, you also have some issues with uh, genetic diversity not being very high in the wild because they're smaller populations and a little bit isolated places. So there's a bit of a struggle with having enough of these animals to breed and have a healthy population. And so how has Audubon Zoo helped contribute to this um, conservation effort? Well, other than being an active member of the breeding program for Babarusa in zoos, uh, Wrigley here has actually had five piglets that have helped uh, add to the species. Um, we also help raise awareness for the species as well as for this group. And we've also sent both keepers and educators over to Indonesia to work with locals over there uh, for this plan and this program and to help exchange experiences and skills and figure out what we can do to help in Indonesia with these animals. And so what can people do from home if they want to help this conservation program? Um, the best thing to do is to support your local zoos, particularly ones that have these species that we are working with. And other than that, you can also check out the Action, Indo Action Indonesia page online. Um, they have information there on what you can do to help support them. And you can also make donations to help with the programs worldwide. But the biggest thing you can do is support your local zoos. And so Kristen, can you tell us a little bit about our Babarusas that we have? Sure. So we have two Babarusa here at the zoo. Our male Wrigley over here is 16 years old. And then the one that's right here in front of me is Babs, we call her Bibi, and she is going to be six next month. As you can see, they very much like attention. <laughs> Anytime we're out here, we have both these pigs right up next to us waiting to get scratched. And so what do Babs and uh, Wrigley eat? Um, so Babarusa, like most pigs, are omnivores, so they eat fruits, veggies, they'll eat bark. Um, they also eat meat, they'll take fish. Uh, if they can catch a small animal, they will eat it. Um, they also, as you can see, our otter Hana lives out here with them and they will actually take some fish from Hana when she doesn't finish her food as well. Basically, pigs will eat just about anything. And then, so can you explain a little bit about Wrigley's tusks that he has? Sure. Um, so male Babarusa typically have four tusks on their face. Wrigley's a little bit special. He only has two. He actually damaged two of his when he was little, and they didn't grow back in, which can happen. Um, the Babarusa tusks, there's not a real known purpose for them. There's some theories, but they're a little bit too fragile to use for fighting. Plus, they curve inwards, so they wouldn't do much good fighting. Um, the only thing I've really seen him use them for is when he's nesting, he'll pick up a bunch of hay and kind of balance it on his snout under his tusks and make himself a nice little bed. Um, but yeah, they really, they're still trying to figure out what the purpose is of the tusks. They do grow continuously. And as you can see, one of them gets kind of close to his eye. Um, we have to trim that one down for him because he's not very good about doing it himself. Uh, the other one he does just fine, but for some reason Wrigley doesn't like taking care of that right side on his own. <laughs> And so what are some of their um, favorite enrichment items? Uh, Wrigley's favorite is definitely peanuts. He loves eating peanuts. Um, honestly, any food enrichment is great for them. He also loves swimming, and BB's definitely starting to enjoy the swimming too. As you can see, we keep our moat nice and deep so that they can get out there and swim when it's hot. They also love wallowing in the mud. You can kind of see BB back there. It keeps them nice and cool. Uh, well back there, but their, uh, <laughs> their favorite is definitely food. 
You can see BB's all nice and muddy now. That'll help keep the flies away and keep them from getting sunburned as well. When they go swimming, you can actually see they're a little bit more of a pink color because they get a little sunburned in the summer when they don't have enough mud on them. And so, uh, what are their favorite treats? You said really is peanuts. Peanuts is a big one. Um, peanut butter as well. They like Nutri-Grain bars. Um, they're also, they like Cheerios too. We'll put Cheerios out here for them to look for. Um, we have, they get a good variety of fruits and veggies in their diet, but really any kind of novel fruit that isn't normally in their food, they really do enjoy getting on occasion, like kiwis, mangoes, things like that. And so, uh, what, someone's asking what they feel like when you, when you touch scratching them. Um, they're definitely, their fur is, or their fur, sorry, their, their skin is, um, pretty thick and they have like hairs on it. There's not a lot of hair on it, but there's just a little bit. Um, but it's kind of tough and thick and really smooth behind their ears, but otherwise it's um, a little bit rougher. Uh, you usually compare it to like elephant or rhino skin, but that's not really gonna be a good reference for people that don't <laughs> pet elephants or rhinos on a regular basis. But you can definitely feel, you can't see them well, but there are a bunch of tiny little hairs all over their skin. So Wrigley usually feels, BB feels a little more smooth. Wrigley feels a bit rougher, but that's just because he's generally caked in mud. Up oh, and down she goes. <laughs> and so where can people find the Babarusas when they visit the zoo, Kristen? Uh, they're in our Asia section. They're going to be in the exhibit between the sun bear and the tiger. They're in with our small quad otter, and if you can't see them out and about, they're usually sleeping in one of the corners because they like sleeping in the shade when it's really hot out. But you can, if the first place I would always say to check, especially when it's hot, is down in the moat because they do love wading in or swimming in the moat depending on how deep the water is. And as you can see, they also very much like getting attention from their keepers. And baby will stay here and get scratches as long as, <laughs> as, long as we're out here. And so last question for you, Kristen, what's your favorite part about working with the, with the Babarisas? Um, I've got to say it's probably the fact that we are so hands-on with them. We can do so much of their work like this, like in there with them um, face to face. Most of the animals I work with are, you know, tigers, leopards, bears, animals I can't be in with, interact, like touching, interacting with like this on a daily basis. Um, so it's kind of nice to have an animal you can come in and do this with. And they're really great to work with, a lot of personality. and. It's really cool to teach them new things. Um, Wrigley especially, because he's older, we've done a lot of medical work with him. So like you can do blood draws on him and x-rays and things like that, just with him voluntarily doing it, uh, which is really nice to have an animal want to participate in their own uh, medical care like that. And then mud is part of the job as well. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's a very messy job. <laughs> but as you can see, it's definitely worth it. All right, I think that about wraps it, us, wraps it up for us here. Thanks so much, Kristen. No problem. Uh, make sure to come on Sunday here to the Audubon Zoo to check out Action Indonesia Day. We're going to have a lot of fun enrichment and talks, and just you can learn a lot about the animals and the programs that we're doing to help them.